Romeo was getting ready to send an important text, one in which even the tiniest change could completely alter its meaning. How does he know that the message Juliet receives will be the same as the one he sent, and how does he know she'll get it tonight and not tomorrow? Well, let's ask Claude Shannon. Claude Shannon is one of the most important mathematicians of all time. His work helped shape essentially every device that uses digital information, like your cell phone or your laptop. Shannon's work involved information, and importantly for our scenario, its transmission. For today, we'll use the following setup that Shannon devised. Consider the message that we want to send. In order to send it, we'll first run it through an encoder. What does that accomplish? Well, the encoder gets the message into a simpler form. In our digital world, this means converting something like, say, a string of letters and emojis into a string of ones and zeros, which we call bits. The encoder may also add redundancy, which means it provides extra information about the message just in case something goes wrong. This encoded message is then sent over a channel. That's like the pipeline that the information travels through. For our channel, we define a channel capacity, which we denote by the letter capital C, and which is usually measured in bits per second. This will limit how much information can be transmitted through the channel over a given time interval. It's almost like the width of our pipeline. Our channel also has some noise, which can distort the coded sequence, swapping ones into zeros and zeros into ones, degrading our message. Our capacity is defined using the worst possible case of errors entering into our message while it passes through the channel. When the received sequence exits the channel, it is then decoded using a decoder that properly matches the encoder we used, and we get an output message. The probability of error is the probability that the output message is not equal to the input message. We want this to be really small. There's also some other variables we care about, like the transmission rate R, which is how fast information transmits through the system, and the length N, which determines how long our coded sequence is in bits. Now, how do we deal with the fact that our channel can distort our message? We have a trade-off. The more redundancy we add to make sure the correct message is received, the slower the transmission will be. This is an issue we need to solve in order to properly send our text message. In his immensely influential 1948 paper, The Mathematical Theory of Communication, Claude Shannon presented the following theorem, which helps answer our question. Shannon says, given a channel capacity C for our channel, for any arbitrarily small number epsilon, which is greater than zero, and any rate R that is less than the channel capacity, for large enough N, which is the length of our encoded sequence, there exists an encoder and a decoder that will allow us to transmit our message at a rate bigger than or equal to R and with a probability of error less than or equal to epsilon. Well, what does this mean? It says that we know two things. Firstly, we know that no matter what our channel is like, we can transmit information at any rate less than our channel capacity. Secondly, we know that we can design an encoder and a decoder that accomplishes this transmission with an error probability that's as small as we'd like it to be, meaning we can really get as close to error-free as we'd like to, as long as we respect the speed limit that is set by the channel capacity. So this solves our problem for Romeo. As long as his cell phone carrier has a network with a large channel capacity, they can make sure his message sends fast. And as long as they select a good encoder and decoder, Juliet will receive the message she's supposed to. Shannon's paper is seen as establishing the foundation of the entire field of information theory, a mathematical subject that is both richly interesting and of practical importance in our digital world. For that, we can all thank Claude Shannon, and thank you for watching.